Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. We've got a spicy topic for you today. So, I wanted to talk about the AMDIP yet again. While I've covered this before, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions going around. So, this right here is a 7950X3D system that I had in my test bench for quite a while and I used this for five months as my main. So, I do have a slight idea on how this is supposed to work and it has its issues but it's not as bad as people are making it out to be. And in fact, it's the fastest CPU you can buy for Modern Warfare 3 and Modern Warfare 2 currently. No questions asked, it's not even close. On that note, this is not in my main system anymore. It's a 7800X 3D right over there in the left-hand side. And uh, you might be like, okay, beefy, well, if you switched from it and you're saying it's so good, why'd you switch from it? And truthfully, man, I switched from it just because I want to jump on and play games without having to tweak sometimes. And this machine requires a lot of tweaking if you want to keep it working correctly. So I'll put my hands up and say, okay, the 7950X3D isn't for everybody. It has its ups, it has its downs, and it has quite a few of both. It's really fast, but it has a lot of trouble with staying fast. The 4900K that is over here off of screen, which I just bought and I'm currently overclocking, is awesome too. I love it. But it's slower than the 7950X3 in Call of Duty. But it's slower in averages. It's not slower in 1% lows. So what you'll notice is a trend. The whole misconception is that AMD stutters because it has big dips or terrible 1% lows and Intel doesn't, but Intel loses the averages. And that's kind of the socially accepted norm. It's not even wrong in most scenarios, but where it is wrong is that AMD stutters, quote unquote. Especially in Call of Duty, if you set up an AMD CPU correctly, it will not have any stuttering problems. And generally, no, not generally, all of the time, you're going to be having issues because the AMD CPU is not set up correctly and because the setup is quite nonsensical. And there, I yet again have to say, I understand. That makes sense. AMD deserves to catch some, uh, some hate for having such a complicated and nonsensical setup that so few people can achieve. It's not even difficult to do. It just doesn't make sense. Intel, on the other hand, will always work, more or less. It'll work, but it'll work like ass, but it'll at least always work, which is good. But it does also suffer from the age-old problem of temperatures. And let me tell you, I managed to hit over 400 watts on this CPU. To be fair, I'm like overclocking the soul out of the CPU, so okay, in games it would not do that. It would do like 150 watts. But a 7950X3 will do 80 watts in game to achieve the same or better FPS with maybe slightly more mediocre 1% lows. But more mediocre 1% lows does not mean it's going to stutter. That's not how it works. To sum this up, this machine over here that you cannot see, the 4900K scores 470 CPU average bone stock with DDR5-8200. That's 7800X3D over there, my max OC version of it. This is my own personal score. There's better, there's worse ones out there. I got 512 average on the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark at 1440p, which is better than the Intel, but mind you, the Intel is stock with 8200 RAM. But the Intel had 20 FPS higher in the 1% lows, which doesn't really help my case to prove that AMD doesn't stutter, but yet again, 280 in the 1% lows is still above most people's monitor refresh rates. And yeah, maybe that won't always translate towards the game, but Having 20 FPS lower in the 1% lows doesn't mean AMD stutters. It does mean though that Intel has a clear advantage in something and it is 1% lows. But here's the kicker. You, the general user, aren't going to be paying $700 for an Apex Encore. You're not going to be overclocking your RAM to DDR5-8200 and you're not going to successfully get a 2 to 300 megahertz overclock on a 4900K, which is nearly impossible to cool by conventional means in normal ambient room temperature. And that's what you need to keep in mind, because the results I'm talking about are in a pretty good scenario for the 4900K, where it's cooled with like insane cooling, like 15 ambient, and it runs no problem. But that's the thing, AMD doesn't suffer any of those issues. You can overclock AMD all you want, yeah, it won't make a big difference, but it'll always work as long as you set it up correctly. On the Intel side, if you don't have the beefiest cooler, the beefiest RAM and the beefiest motherboard, you're pretty much screwed and you have zero damn chances of hitting that performance that I was talking about in the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark. 
zero chances. You can wish to Santa Claus to bring you the best things ever, out, you know, excluding like to the motherboards and RAM, and you wouldn't be able to do it unless you bought the best stuff out there. And that's just the situation currently. AMD does not stutter uh, if set up correctly. I can understand if it's talking about the 7900 XDX, which is a whole different ballpark. The 7900 XDX has its issues. I've actually been able to attribute stutters to the 7900 XDX in several games, where it is clear that the stutters are happening because of the 7900 XDX. But I have not been able to attribute many games where there were issues specifically because of the CPU. And I'm talking 7800X3 or 7950X3 game. If you know how to set up an AMD processor properly, especially the dual CCD ones, they will work. But on the Intel side, you don't really have to worry about that. You just have to make sure you're on the latest version of Windows 11 and they'll tend to run. It's just that overclocking then becomes a sort of, not a given basically, it's just like random. You have no guarantee you're gonna get a good Intel overclock unless you go the best of the best. And that's kind of what I want to clear up. So you could go either side and get insane performance today. But with Intel, you cannot cheap out. Meanwhile, on the AMD side, you can get the cheapest of the cheap parts and still have insane, insane performance. This right here is my DDR5 8200-14900K system with a Z790 Apex Encore. Mind you, this is only a 3080 Ti because it's the only spare GPU I had at the moment, but the Galahad Trinity 2 Performance is what I'm using to cool this CPU along with some PK3 thermal paste. And this AIO is pretty much the best you can get on the market out of the 360s. And yet it barely is able to keep this cool at the overclocking that I'm going for. So I've done 5.9 HD off, 6.0 HD off on this, and it's ran it no problem. It can pretty much tank it up until 390 watts. But it can only do that because I've got a giant room fan blowing air from outside. And mind you, it is currently zero degrees where I am because I live in Romania and I live in the mountains. So, the way I was able to cool this so well is because air is being blown from the window into this giant room fan, which then blows it all onto the PC. And yep, uh, that basically means I'm working like 10, 15 C ambient, maybe less. And that's how I've been able to cool this bad boy, no problem. With AMD, you'd never have such an issue. On top of that, I'm using three fans, two on top, one over here, to cool the RAM. And yeah, you kind of really need that because when you're pushing 8200, maybe even 8400, if you have a lucky IMC, you need to keep that RAM nice and cool. These are issues that would never arise on AMD if you're trying to max out the performance. This right here is my 7950X 3D system, and uh, you may notice it's a little bit apart, but you may also notice that it has a very different philosophy. This is a $35 air cooler, and this is like a $200 to $250 B650 motherboard. Isn't that a little bit different than what you just saw on the Intel side? Not only that, this you can cool at 30 degree ambient room temperature, absolutely no problem, and lose zero performance. In the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark, which mind you is different than the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark, this could do 526 average, no issue. And I imagine if I was to run it on the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark, it would do the same, just with lower 1% lows, because that's how the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark is. But even so, if this gets 525.30 in the averages with 270 in the lows, in my opinion, that's still quite a bit better than the 470 on the Intel side, but the Intel side had 300 in the lows. Okay, now that's up to you to decide. Do you want 30 more FPS in the lows, or do you want 60 more FPS in the averages? But do you have the guts to cool that 4900K or do you just want an easy life cooling a 7950X3D or 7800X3D? And okay, full disclosure, the Intel system on the CPU frequency side of things is bone stock. The timings aren't even that great, so it's very early. Uh, it's probably gonna hit 500 plus averages, I'm not gonna lie, but basically it will always win in the 1% lows, but neither system will actually stutter when set up correctly. So you have to basically pick crazy wattage and temperatures and really difficult OC, or difficult initial setup, but really easy to cool and slightly lower 1% lows. And that's entirely up for you to decide. If you go cheap on the Intel side, you're not gonna get anywhere near that 500 mark. You're just gonna eat some ass down in the 400s to 300s. But if you know what you're doing, Intel can definitely be the way to go. Why? Because you can get a really fun overclocking experience and you've got the balls to actually cool it. 
If you'd rather just have a system you can guarantee good performance on without needing to be an overclocking expert and rather just watch a YouTube video on how to set it up properly, 7800X3D and 7950X3D are the way to go. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful to make a decision towards what you'd want to buy. I personally am glad to have both systems and it really helps me as somebody that does consoles. With that said, I'm definitely curious to see how that Intel system is going to hold up long term given the hate it's gotten due to it being basically just a tiny refresh with not much changed. But I'm enjoying it so that's really all that matters as a buyer, right? Anyway, thank you for watching, have a good one and see you in the next video.